So I was leaving the parking lot today and I found a mushroom. I had found it last fall, but by the time I found them, they were all kind of like brown and they weren't edible. But I was pretty excited because it is a new one for me. It is the Shaggy Mane. You see that? And they're pretty easy to identify. And so, you know, I don't eat mushrooms, but my husband loves them just so I don't accidentally poison them. This one's easy to ID. And one of the things that's interesting about it, well, let me get some out and show you. Okay. Let's see. They're breaking apart easy, but do you see how in there it's black? Okay, all that. Well, it's kind of known as black ink. And if you touch it, you get ink all over you, see? So, they're also called, other than Shaggy Mane, ink mushrooms. But they're pretty easy to identify. I'll show you, like here's a big one. Okay. And they kind of turn brownish and black at the bottom. And you want to pick them when they're mainly white. Because here's the pictures of the ones that when I was picking them in the parking lot. But you will notice these pictures right here look like almost toadstools. And that's where the cap kind of turns up and it's black. And by that time, you don't want to pick them to eat. They're too far gone. So I'm going to find a recipe and make a special treat for my husband with shaggy mane mushrooms. These mushrooms decompose incredibly fast. You want to wash off. Some say you shouldn't even wash them. You should just take a little sponge to them, but see it's nice in there. I don't know about you, but I'm for washing them well. Stem here. And I, I guess I'll break open the stem and show you, but it's hollow inside. See that? It's another identification. But there's no way I wouldn't wash these off, not just a little brush, because these have grew through the grass, and they are, you know, they're dirty. Okay. This one, see it's starting to go black, inky. And this is the part that decomposes really fast. And yeah, I'll be back when I have these all clean. I'm letting these drain a bit while I chop up some onions and get ready to make the dish. Now, I think foraging is a great skill for anybody to learn, whether you're a prepper, bushcrafter, whatever, just enjoy going outside. So, I'm really happy I've identified a new mushroom and it is one I can easily find and I can add it to my list, you know, check it off. I'm actually making a little forager notebook for different things I find where I find them and like little pictures of what they look like here because sometimes when you find the woods they don't look exactly like your mushroom identification book. But it's really a fun thing going in the fall, spring, summer with your kids, with your grandkids and trying to identify new fungus, new mushrooms, new things to eat. And your grandkids will really enjoy it and they might end up liking mushrooms when they didn't before because they found them themselves. Sliced up, how about a half of onion? We've got a bunch of butter in here. Just letting it brown the onion. <laughs> you all know, I love the smell of butter and onions. It's just so good. And we just let this cook just a little longer. While I'm doing this, I thought I'd tell you a little bit more about the mushroom. Um, and these inky caps, category of mushrooms, they're different because, you know, that black, yellow underneath, um, that's where the reproductive spores are. Of course, that's not different. But they auto-digest the cap and gills and it will change, of course, into that black, gooey, liquid ink. But the spores aren't digested. 
They're actually releasing the liquid and exposed to currents, allowing them to go to new areas. So, different way to make new mushrooms. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think I want just a little more butter in there. After all, right? Mushrooms are even calories. Let's add butter. And I'm going to add just a little salt. Okay, now I drain those mushrooms, put them in pieces. Come on. Now we're going to cook these a little while. Now, some of the recipe I'm going on actually said to use them whole, but I don't know, I just want to clean them well, so... And anyway, they're easier to eat in pieces, but they're probably going to fall into pieces anyway. And this nice. I'm going to cook this for yeah, three, four minutes, I think. I should just leave it alone a minute. Now, do any of you remember that old Clint Eastwood movie? I can't remember what it was called, but he was young. He was in the Civil War and he comes upon this girl's school. And anyway, the matron of the girl's school ends up, after they amputate his leg, I believe, ends up killing him with poisonous mushrooms in dinner. So I always think about this when I make mushrooms because I don't eat them, but my husband does. So anyway, this is only the, you know, morels we picked forever. You know, I know morel really well. And... This is my third mushroom, because this one is one of the top four, easy to identify. Now, the other one I found this summer along with my grandson was the oyster mushroom. Found that right out in the woods. It was easy to identify because it smells like black licorice. So really, I mean, it looked like it was supposed to. It was growing like it was supposed to. So we picked it. It had little bugs in it like it was supposed to. And it sure smelled like black licorice. Now, my husband loved that mushroom. Let's see if he'll love this one. Supposedly, Shelly talked about these in a uh, poem. It's called The Sensitive Plant. And it was, their mass rotted off them flake by flake till the thick stalk stuck like a murderer's stake where rags of loose flesh yet terrible on high infecting the winds that wander by. Boy, sounds like this must be a Halloween mushroom, right? Okay, now we're getting the water out of the mushrooms. Get cooked down a bit. And the water's going to turn a beautiful dark gray because of the inky part still in it. See, there's some right there. Just cook down that liquid a bit. And any of you that really know what you're doing in cooking a <laughs> shaggy mane, um, I'd love to hear it because I don't. Okay, now to that, I'm going to add a little cream. This is heavy whipping cream that I just happened to have left over in the refrigerator. Must have been making Brandy Alexander's. Just gonna let this cook up a bit. Make a sauce here. And right now it's getting to look like mushroom soup, isn't it? But I'd want to cook this for another yeah, three minutes or so. So we kind of have like an Alfredo sauce almost going on here. Now it used to be these mushrooms were used to make a dye. If they were heated in water, in an iron pot, an olive green dye is processed. And a solution containing ammonia, a green, gray green dye is produced. And the dye can be used to color wood, fabric, and paper. And I know that ink could be used to cover my skin on my hand. I mean, I really was black when I picked these. But it did wash off. And I'm going to put just a splash of some Jameson Irish whiskey in here. 
go. But yet, I should mention, you have to be careful. There's something called coprine and alcohol sensitivity. And it's a toxin that can come from this fung fungus. Uh, it can be unpleasant, but it doesn't seem to be dangerous. Um, symptoms include flush skin and a warm sensation, rapid heartbeat and palpitations, a tingling cessation in the arms and legs, a metallic taste in the mouth, nausea and vomiting. Of course, if these would be severe, you would want to definitely seek help. But, oh, there we go. That's good. I like it to cook down a little bit more, you know, thicken up just a little. But you can see the mushrooms kind of turning brown a little. Let it continue to cook. Well, you see it's thickened up quite a bit. I think it's time to serve to my husband. So here it is, it doesn't look that appetizing color, but then neither does mushroom soup. So let's see what my husband thinks. What do you think? It's good, it needs salt. Needs salt, okay. What's the sauce? I put onion, butter, uh, whipping cream and a little Jameson whiskey. We didn't have any wine. <laughs> so take one more. And describe it compared to other mushrooms you've had. How intense of a flavor is the mushroom? It's a mild flavor. Mild. In the textures of uh, not real firm, but not bad. So would you want it again? Mm-hmm. You like it then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, it was a success. My husband loved it. He thought it was good. Milder mushroom, but he liked it. Of course, he likes mushrooms, and I don't. But I want to put a warning out there. Make sure you know what you're doing when you pick a mushroom and you prepare it for your family. Do your due diligence. Uh, in this case, I used my mushroom ID book. I had read up on it, and this is an easy one to identify. So I felt confident because, you know, I don't want to poison my husband. So make sure you do your due diligence so you don't have any mushroom poisoning accidents. But get outside, forage, and find out what the forest and the other parts of the land have to offer. Explore. This is Proper Popuri saying please subscribe, share the knowledge, and thumbs up if you like this video.